Pinched between the mouth of the River Leven and the Firth of Clyde is a promontory of parkland known as Leven Grove. Home to the new Pavilion Cafe and custom-built Work Connect training suite, the staff and service users try to hold on to some sense of normality during and in between successive pandemic lockdowns. Bringing people together wasn't that easy or even always possible, but through a series of creative projects, minds were engaged and goals achieved. The Leaving Grove calendar for 2021 came about when, as things opened up a little, we were able to venture out into the park grounds, at a distance, and frame some pictures. With an array of cameras and phones, Small groups snapped photographs and discussed subjects, obvious and obscure. We managed to amass over 350 shots. This then led to Leaven Grove Create and a booklet of creative writing. The booklet in turn sparked the idea for this documentary. Picture Normality. So going just a few questions about the calendar. You're one of the guys out in the rain and the, <laughs> and the rubbish weather in November, taking uh, what, October, whatever it was, trying to take pictures for a calendar that was supposed to represent the whole year. And we're trying to get pictures that would be in the summer and you know, mm. in a, such a short time. I know. Um, what do you remember about that yourself? Ah, it was quite good. It was some of the things I didn't understand quite a lot of the rule of thoughts and. Mm -hmm. Didn't understand the rule of thugs so much, but leading lines, I kind of understood that when you yeah. get a picture of something that leads into something, not the heat again. Like the fountain or whatever, one time I took one of the, out in the greenhouse, it was uh, the one with the bikes. There was a bike right at the front and they the lean the, right up to the back of the greenhouse, all the bikes and that. Yeah. I've got one that kind of... It sticks out well because the weather was dreadful most of the time in the uh, January. Mm. This is where you look forward to when you've been out in that rain and wind and snow, coming back and get your nice grey cup with your tea or coffee in it, <laughs> heat you up. But it wasn't always lashing down with rain, and people had different ways of looking at the same thing. So behind David, we've actually got some crates that were used in the calendar. Yes. Is right in it, David? Yes. Um, and David actually spotted them behind there in amongst all the, the kind of rubbish, really. And what did you, what did they stick out for, David? What do you think the look reminded you of? What do you think? I don't know, you think you said it was like a, like a wee bit of like a bridge or something? Uh, bridge. Was a bridge. A, a bridge, like a fourth road bridge, yeah. remember? Yeah. And this is what we're talking about. Seeing things differently. So Scott, this is the guy who took the picture. It's like a split picture of the park with all the leaves. And it was a, a similar camera, wasn't it, Scott? Yeah. Um, what kind of camera is that? Uh, it's on Xperia 10 too. So it's Xperia. Hmm. And that was a similar one to you had before. This is yeah. a more advanced one. And it was an app. Was it an app you used? Yeah, Creative Effect it's called. It wasn't always sunny and bright, but we eventually managed to whittle it down to 12 calendar shots and produce the finished item on time. Jenny Watson had the final say. So this is Jenny Watson from the Clydesider and Jenny was the one who picked the final 12 pictures for the calendar we did with Leave and Go. Yeah. From so what do you do in the Clydesider? I am the Clydesider's community engagement worker um, which has obviously been difficult to, to be this last year. Can't really go out and engage with anyone so I've mostly been doing the social media. In fact that really is <laughs> yeah, social media, so I spend my days looking at photographs and words and, and sharing them for the world to see. And you also worked in Leaving Grove for a while, didn't you, as well? I did, yes. I volunteered uh, with Leaving Grove for about five years. Uh, it was their re uh, arts group. It, it started off with just a small group and, and it, it grew massively. It's a great group, but we worked mostly on exhibitions that participated in the Scottish Mental Health Arts Festival. And the exhibitions range from photography to sculptures and they got bigger every year. They were amazing. I loved it. That's good. Were there any birds in the exhibition? Yes. Like my pie heckling as well. Yes. <laughs> um, and you got an award for that, did you? I did, yes. I was uh, given a Provost Award. I was the Community Arts and Culture Champion in 2014, I think. And I'm guessing with the social media stuff you do in the Clayside, you look at a lot of pictures every day. 
all day, every day, I'm constantly choosing what photographs are going to go with, with what words and um, paragraphs to share with the world. Looking for something that would capture the magic of, of the park um, and its surroundings and the beauty of just the area that we're in, but also a wee bit of individuality. The creativity in this shot is just beautiful. It's not just your typical bird in a tree. It's kept, the lights captured the colours and the leaves and it's just so artistic. I love this photo of the gargoyle on the fountain. One, because the fountain obviously hasn't worked for many years and it was something that most people that visit the park uh, were delighted to see, but also it's just such a, it's a cheeky wee photograph. Um, you can just picture this wee gargoyle getting up to no good when there's no one looking. Last year obviously was a difficult year and uh, the group didn't have many opportunities to come together so everything was done in a short space of time and obviously socially distanced but it gave the group a great sense of purpose and it really helped them manage all the emotions they were feeling over the last year and the, the sense of achievement they now feel in confidence is just is phenomenal. The Leaving Grove 2021 Calendar As an extension of this, and on the concept of Every Picture Tells a Story, we began a series of remote creative writing workshops. We didn't expect to get any real writing pieces out of this, but we did. Quite a few. And this resulted in a great collection of stories, called Leaving Grove Create. Although topics included memories of long ago, golf and even wind farms, much of the time the words gravitated to deeper feelings. John wanted to tell his story to give others hope, show that a pathway back to some kind of normality was possible. I start on the 4th of October 2004. My wife went to work and that was the last time I seen her. Um, she had a brain haemorrhage, died about an hour later in hospital. Um, so it was the day before my 25th wedding anniversary, which didn't make it easy. Not that it had been easy, but um, it didn't make it any easier, but it was the day before my 25th wedding anniversary. Uh, that, was, that was a bad time. My son was 14. And my daughter was 22, I think. Um, my son took to drugs, getting himself into trouble. Um, he eventually joined the army when he was 16. That was good for him. Um, he's still in the army, he's doing well. He's married with two kids. Uh, my daughter took it really, really bad in 2010. I was going on holiday, my daughter was going to look after my dog, but I couldn't get in contact with her. Uh, phoning her, phoning her, phoning her, went to her door, no answer. So eventually I went to my mum's, got the spare keys, uh, I went into my daughter's flat and I found her in a coma. She was an alcoholic, she'd take to drink, uh, taking pills, drink, what have you. So, she died on the 4th of June, 2010. Um, we had to get permission to turn all the ventilators and machines and what have you off. Uh, so that was hard. Uh, in between that, two of my brother-in-laws died. My sister-in-law, my mother-in-law, uh, it seemed never ending, it just seemed never ending. And I went through that thing, why me, you know. Uh, you got angry maybe? Did, very angry, very angry. Uh, drinking a lot, taking drugs, getting into trouble. So I was taking cocaine and it's like, I don't know, it just makes you feel better. It's like, takes everything away. Um, even though it doesn't take it away, it takes away at the time. Mm. Um, and then when you stop and... 
go back to work on Monday morning or whatever, Sunday night or whatever and like it's a downer for like a few days and then it's a weekend again and take drugs and drinking and um, I don't know, it was just to dull the pain I think. So I'd been diagnosed by sort of depression, anxiety, bereavement issues and um, I get sent to see psychologists and counsellors and uh, as I said in my wee story it was all bullshit. To me it was just all bullshit. But to make sort of matters worse, it was like young people. I was going to see people in maybe their late thirties or their late twenties and what have you, and I was thinking, you've read all this shit in a book. I mean, I know they're only trying to do their job, but to me it was like, you... like I mean, they hadn't been through what I'd been through. I mean, they, they know, or they've got that process of how to sort of treat people and what have you, but they've learned it through reading books and they've not got that lived experience all this stuff going on and on and on. Anyway, I get sent to see, my doctor sent me to see Ingram at Riverview and Ingram was like, she was not like um, these people I'd been to see before, she was just like, how you doing, I'm Ingram, blah blah blah, talking away, as if she'd knew me forever kind of thing. And I thought to myself, right, this is different. So she asked me if I wanted to come to Leaving Grove. Uh, which I did do, and it's the best thing that I've done in a long, long time. Tam and Laura were here, support workers. But it's no a clinical kind of place. It's like, do you want to do this? You fancy doing that? If you don't, it doesn't matter. Just, you've not got that, you should do this, you should do that. This is how you should cope. And mm -hmm. like, you get left to kind of cope yourself, but with guidance, if you get me. Mm -hmm. You get guidance, but you don't get... It's no clinical, it's no somebody telling you something in a book. So what I quickly realised was that it wasn't just happening to me. The people I met, the people I met had oh, all sorts of different problems. and But it's, you get that scenario that, Christ, I would rather keep my problems than deal with yours. You know, that kind of thing. Everybody's in a bad place. Um, as I say, you realise really quickly that it's not just happening to you. It's just part of life. Okay, it's horrible what's happened, but it's part of life. I don't know, it's a strange place uh, because it's a horticultural group. Come guidance, come you got the help you need. I started off sort of gardening. As I got better, um, I went on counselling courses and computer courses. Uh, loads of things I wouldn't have done, but things that, um, things that I got offered up to me. You can, that's there if you fancy trying that, or this is there if you fancy trying this. So, Done, so as I say, I've done the counselling, I've done um, computer courses, I've done peer support. Um, I like to tell people, not my whole story, yeah. but I like to tell them that I've been in a bad place. Mm -hmm. I came here, I came through everything. I was a client here for, I don't know, when did I come here first? 2015, 2014, 2015. Right. So I was a client for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but as I progressed, I got a lot of confidence back. And uh, there's nothing better than somebody that's at their lowest ebb kind of thing, hearing somebody like my story. Mm -hmm. This guy's still here to tell the tale. Now I'm in a good place. Uh, I actually work here, so I've came from being a client, being a volunteer, I actually work here. And uh, to get through that in these stages, for me, I, I, I hate saying this, but I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself for getting to be around. Laura, one of the support workers, who said to me, why don't you write your story, John? Why don't you? 
Ingram said to me, you should write a book. Uh, I wrote it and I've had it for, I don't know when I wrote that actually, but I've had it for a good while. Yeah. I thought, this is it. This is in the past and it's going in the past. Mm -hmm. So I said to Tam, that's getting burnt. What for? I said, that's it, finished Tam. It's gone, it's done. I don't need that, but I did say to him, it's a great story to give other people hope. We didn't want to limit ourselves to pictures and stories, so we didn't. Music and art were also on the agenda. I was never a, an arty person. No? Um, At school, nothing like that? No, really, because I just couldn't draw. And yet I became a hairdresser, so... And you need skills for that, but mm. I could cut a straight line, but don't ask me to draw a straight draw line. Um, especially with arthritis in my hands. But I was shocked at the painting that I'd done. It was just before we locked down again. There used to be about six or seven years, but it was cut down because of COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, because they had to separate out the chairs and everything. So there wasn't, there was only four of us mm -hmm. that, that came. Well, the craft class was good for me because I've been through a lot this last year, this year, and I needed it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, for my mental health and everything. I still struggle, but uh, hopefully we're going to open again soon. And it means we can get back to a bit of laughter or whatever, because when you're sitting in a house yourself, it's not easy. No, it's not. So what was the best, what was your favourite bit of art you did at the end then? What was it? There was one piece you were quite proud yes, of. Yes, I'm actually really proud of it. I tell you, I was so chuffed. Okay. I was over the moon about it. Because my one of my, my dad's friends does a lot of paintings and he done two paintings for me and I phoned him and I said to him, By the way, Billy, I've got a painting for you. He's like when you talked about you said you kinda draw a straight line, I says, Well, this one's for you. I honestly I I was so so chuffed about it. I was telling everybody, I was showing everybody, mm. you know, all of it after all of it after, you know what I mean? Can you believe it? There's an A chord I started with, just with a wee open string in the bottom, and just that added a wee touch with a pinky there. So. so that's the kind of main part of the chord, chord progression. It comes in right at the start, gives it a wee bit of character. And then just kind of going back and forward, and I keep returning to a D chord, but because you play a different chord after each time, it always sounds a wee bit different. Um, and it just kind of developed out like that. And I moved up here for a wee chorus, but I've not quite finished that bit off yet. Andrew's musical influences are pretty varied. He likes Oasis and Neil Young, but this track has a real ambience and melancholy that suits the topic perfectly. So Andrew, is this your recording setup? Yep, yeah, I've got the... This is half of it just now, so uh, there's extra stuff with microphones and mic stands, but I've just been doing a wee bit just with the guitar. Okay. Um, so it just goes straight through this wee box into the computer. Uh, nice and simple. 